35 years and still talking, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Here we sing. Coming to you from the most infected city in the world, it's the Ramble with Alex Bennett. And I am Alex, and we will be here until, uh, let's see here, uh, up, 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 I will be here until midnight, Eastern Daylight Time, okay, here on the... Uh, let me see here. Uh, we're on the, the right coast of the United States. Okay? All right. So you can, uh, you can know that. Well, hello, everybody. How are you? What's happening? Let me just get a few things together here for you so that we can uh, check in and see what's happening uh, in the wonderful world of the coronavirus. Now, here in New York City, as you know, we are... Uh, we're we're doing a really great job of keeping up our end of the bargain. We've got uh, oh, we got so many. Well, let's look, let's look at the map. Okay, the, here's the map, folks. Look at that. Total confirmed in the world. Okay, total confirmed in the world. Two million, two hundred forty-two thousand eight hundred and sixty-eight. Now that is the latest number. I just refreshed that a few minutes ago, and that is the latest one. Total deaths in the world, 154,142 people. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? Now you compare that to the, to the, uh, to the uh, uh, what do you call it, the uh, uh, big uh, bad virus that we got back in 1917, 1918. Uh, that killed off about... Uh, uh, what 500 million people? Okay, so we're nowhere near that. So don't don't th don't think we're heading for another Spanish flu. Which, by the way, I don't think started in Spain. It started on a uh, um, uh, army base here in the United States, if I'm not too mistaken about that one. Let's look at what is happening here in the United States of America. Uh, let me see here. Come on, there we go. Uh, 701,131 confirmed total deaths, 36,997. Let's round it off, 37,000 dead, okay? Uh, the uh, top city for deaths in the United States, of course, is New York City, and it has, uh, ah, boy, 13,202 deaths, but... Things are getting better. Less deaths. Less deaths. It's, uh, it's getting better, so we're getting less deaths than we had before. Okay? All right. Does that, uh, we're, uh, we're down to, um, what was it? We got down to 606, and now we're at 630, but the day before we were at about 730-something or another. So we're, it, we're, it's starting to go down, and the amount of people going in the hospital is going down. Intubations are going down. Uh, so... It looks like we're kind of, well, we're, we're flirting along the, the mesa of the, uh, of the curve. Okay? All right. So it's kind of hit a mesa. Anyway, that's what we got there. Now, let me, uh, let me tell you something here today that happened, and I'm going to play you something that's going to last about 15 minutes, 16 minutes, but you're going to love it. You're going to just love it if you didn't hear it already, and if you would already heard it, I watched it a second time and a third time, and I enjoyed it. Now, what prompted what I'm about to play for you was this. Uh, it, is a, uh, <laughs> it is another one of those tweets from Donald Trump, and he, in this particular case, goes after, well, my governor, and a man who I think is doing just a great job of leadership in this state during a very trying time. And he writes... Governor Cuomo should spend more time doing and less time complaining. Get out there and get the job done. Stop talking. We built you thousands of hospital beds that you didn't need or use. 
gave large numbers of ventilators that you should have had that you should have had and helped you with testing that you should be doing and then on and on and on so that was his uh, th that was his go at at Mario Cuomo well at every day Mario Cuomo does a briefing like about 12:30 our time here or 11:30 our time here and uh, he tells you how many people died and how many people been added and then he gives you a pep talk gives a very nice pep talk uh, to say, hey, we're New Yorkers, you know, th this thing was expected to be higher than it was, but it didn't go as high as it went because we as New Yorkers rallied together and we stayed indoors and we're wearing masks and we're doing all that needs to be done to slow down that, that upward climb and turn it around into a mesa and then maybe it's going down, all right? And we love those pep talks. They make us. They make. They don't. They don't. They don't encourage us as much as they make us feel good. And he makes us feel good by knowing that we have leadership in this state who is taking care of business. All right. Well, he was asked about this particular tweet that I just, you know, showed you. This thing. This piece of crap from Donald Trump. And he was asked what he what he thought about it. And, uh, well, this, this is why I like this guy. And if you've wanted somebody to take Trump to the woodshed, this is about 16 minutes of taking Trump to the woodshed. And I also wanted to get your uh, response. It looks like the president is also watching this press conference. He tweeted 13 minutes ago, quote, Governor Cuomo should spend more time doing and less time complaining. Get out there and get the job done. Stop talking. We built you thousands of hospital beds that you didn't need or use, gave large numbers of ventilators that you should have had and helped you with testing that you should be doing. It goes on a little bit more. So wondering if you could respond to that and then also the question Good. about the overwhelmed ICU. Good. Let's respond to the uh, president. Uh, first of all, if he's sitting home watching TV, maybe he should get up and go to work, right? Second, the... Uh, let's keep emotion and politics out of this and personal ego, if we can, because this is about the people and it's about our job. Uh, and let's try to focus on that. I have said repeatedly that uh, when we were fighting for the additional capacity for our hospital system, that the president moved very quickly, and I applauded him for it and he brought the Army Corps of Engineers, and he brought them up to build the Javits Center capacity, 2,500 beds. He's wrong that it hasn't been used. About 800 people have gone through Javits. Uh, to dismiss 800 people is uh, disrespectful. Uh, but we didn't use 2,500 beds because we didn't reach the capacity. When he says, well, we built it, we didn't need it, it sounds like a uh, suggestion is, well, it was a request by the state that wasn't valid. If he didn't really believe 2,500 beds was necessary, uh, I don't believe the federal government would have helped build 2,500 beds. Uh, and the, the number came from a projection from him, him. See, he should read the reports he issues. The White House Coronavirus Task Force had enormous, projected in the millions of people. The CDC, which is the president, projected in the millions of people. So the projections were high. They were the president's projections. So for him to say to anyone, well, you relied on projections and the projections were wrong. They're your projections, Mr. President. So were we foolish for relying on your projections, Mr. President? CDC, Coronavirus White House Task Force, that's you, White House, that's you. We relied on your projections. Okay, shouldn't have relied on your projections. Actually, I think the president has a better argument, which is 
yes, we built 2,500 beds because the projection said it could get that bad. And because we worked together, we flattened the curve and we didn't hit the projection, which is actually what happened. But don't suggest that anyone made a mistake relying on your projections or on Cornell, Columbia, McKinsey, et cetera. Uh, second, I have said a number of times, I don't know what am I supposed to do, send a bouquet of flowers? They were very helpful on Javits. They were very helpful on sending the U.S. Navy ship Comfort. Uh, they were very helpful in intervening with China and getting PPE equipment out of China. Uh, they were very helpful in helping us find ventilators. I said, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, going forward, we're still in the midst of it. Uh, the president doesn't want to help on testing. He said 11 times. I said, the one issue we need help with is testing. He said 11 times, I don't want to get involved in testing. It's too complicated. It's too hard. I know it's too complicated and it's too hard. That's why we need you to help. I can't do an international supply chain. Uh, he wants to say, well, I did enough. Yeah, none of us have done enough. We haven't because it's not over. So yes, thank you for the Javits. Thank you for the U.S. Navy ship Comfort. But it's not over. We have a lot more to do. And no one can take the posture, well, just say thank you for what I've done, and I'm now out. I'm not doing anything else. I've done my part. What if I said to the people of my state, OK, I'm done. By the way, I saved hundreds of thousands of lives. I flattened the curve. I created more hospital beds than anyone ever imagined. I coordinated the entire state. I'm done. I'm done. I'm going home. I'm going to go see my mother. I'm going to spend time with my kids, and I'm going to go out fishing in Connecticut because their marinas are open. Uh, that's it. I'm done. What if I said that? That's what he's saying. I'm done. I don't want to help on testing. Testing is too hard. And then the only thing he's doing, let's be honest, well, it's up to the states to do reopen. By the way, it was always up, up to the states. What are you going to grant me what the Constitution gave me before you were born? It's called the Tenth Amendment. I didn't need the President of the United States to tell me that I'm governor. And I didn't need the President of the United States to tell me uh, the powers of a state. People did that. Alexander Hamilton, Thomas Jefferson, James Madison, uh, they are the ones who gave me the power. And I don't need the President of the United States to read the Constitution for me. Maybe he should have read the Constitution before he said he had the power to open the states, where he did a very graceful 180, and many people allowed him to do the graceful 180. But uh, so he now says it's up to the governors, which he said repeatedly now, yesterday, version of yesterday. And now, it's up to the governors to reopen. Okay, I'm going to reopen. I get it. And you don't want to help on testing, which is a national problem and replicates the same chaos that you created with medical supplies because FEMA wasn't ready. By the way, I needed a stockpile. Where was your stockpile? 10,000 ventilators for the nation? That was your stockpile? where your projections, the federal projections, said they would need double the hospital capacity of this nation. Think about that. The CDC says double the hospital capacity of the nation. The minimum projection was 2.4 million hospital beds. You know how many hospital beds we have in this nation? 900,000. His projection says 2.4 million hospital beds. The whole hospital system is only 900. And his stockpile has 10,000 ventilators. 
you were ready with your stockpile? Didn't you read your own CDC projection? Didn't you read your own coronavirus protection? So thank you again, Mr. President, for the Javits. Thank you for the, coronavirus, uh, for the uh, U.S. Navy ship Comfort, which, by the way, is just doing your job as president. It's not really thank you like you wrote a check yourself, but thank you. Uh, for that. We're not out of the woods. We have to go forward. We need help on testing and we need funding. It's up to the governors. It's up to the states. We'll then provide the funding. No, they only want to pass a bill that funds their small business fund called PPE, their small business program. We need to fund the small business program. But you're going to say, after just saying this monumental task is up to the individual governors and the individual states, I'm providing no help, no assistance, no financial money. I understand that small businesses need the funding. By the way, I know that airlines need a bailout, but not the states. Why don't you show as much consideration to states as you did to your big businesses and to your airlines, right? Did you guys speak yesterday or this morning after he no. announced the May 1st? No, you haven't talked at all. After he announced the May, what? I'm sorry. After he announced the May 1st um, reopening of, of No, he didn't announce anything. He said it's up to the states. That's what he said. And if you say it's up to the states, and you just hold up a big microphone that can listen to all the governors, you'll hear some governors say, I can start to reopen right away. Because some governors are in places where they don't have a serious problem. They never did. By the way, some states never even closed down. So if you're in a state that has a de minimis issue, yeah, then you can open up faster. You can open up tomorrow. Or you can start opening up tomorrow. He's doing nothing. He said it's up to the states. It's up to the governors, which is what it always was, because it's always been the governor's power. And then he says, this is a 50-piece puzzle. No, no, no. That's called the map of the United States. It's not a puzzle. Uh, and those lines are called states. And those states have constitutional power. Remember, the way this whole thing starts, the colonies create the federal government, not the other way around. So introduction to constitutional theory and policy. The states have the power to open. The states are opening on their own timelines. We're trying to coordinate with our neighboring states. Western states are coordinating. Middle states are coordinating. All he's doing is uh, walking in front of the parade, but he has nothing to do with the timing of the parade, right? The governors are going to open when they think they should open. All I'm saying is there's two things they need help from. They need help from the federal government. Two things. Help on testing, because states can't do that, and I don't want to redo the mayhem of the PP debacle. Second point, we need funding to do it. And the way you love talking about how you funded everything, big businesses are all getting bailed out, airlines are getting bailed out, bail out, bail out, bail out, all with taxpayers' money. State governments, which are the only ones who are doing this whole reopening, they're going to need funding, right? And will show gratitude. How many times do you want me to say thank you? But I'm saying thank you for doing your job. This was your role as president, OK? Uh, so that's the honest statement of fact. Without politics, I'm not running for anything. I have no agenda but delivering for the people of this state and without ego. You want me to say thank you? Thank you for doing your job in helping build Javits 
and sending the U.S. Navy ship Comfort. Thank you for participating in a modicum of federal responsibility in a national crisis, which you know is a national crisis because he declared a federal emergency. So thank you for having the federal government participate in a federal emergency. Uh, and thank you for help building Javits, 2,500 beds, pursuant to your projection. Your projection. And if you don't agree with your projection, fire the head of the CDC, fire the White House Coronavirus Task Force people, because they did the projections. In case he forgot or didn't read his CDC report, just to be precise, March 13th, March 13th, so we're well into it. CDC says 160 to 214 million Americans infected. That's over half the population, CDC. 2.4 million to 21 million Americans hospitalized. 2.4 million, bottom number, 21 million Americans hospitalized. March 13th, the CDC. 2.4, okay? Let's say they're low number, 2.4 to 21, which is a hell of a differential, right? Either 2.4 or 10 times 2.4. Thank you for that great projection. But anyway, let's take their minimum number, 2.4. How many hospital beds do you have? 900, call it a million. So it's two and a half times what your capacity is, right? We're the state of New York, we have a 50,000 bed capacity. By their projections, what do we need? 150,000 beds. By the way, what did McKinsey say that we needed? 140,000 beds. They got it from the CDC. As it says on the screen. They got it from the CDC. That's why we built 2,500 beds at Javits. Because we listened to you, Mr. President. And if we were foolish for listening to you, then shame on us. Uh, but read your own report next time before you criticize it. Oh, boy. Uh, yeah. There we go. Uh, I got to tell you, I am so happy this guy is the governor of the state I live in at a time like this, okay? And I wanted you to hear that because I thought you should hear it, and I, 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 I really think that he said what had to be said and certainly made us all feel maybe just a little bit better that he said it. Oh, maybe there are a few people out there who are fans of... Uh, of Mr. Trump and say, think that he can, can't do any wrong. But for the most part, folks, uh, uh, you know, uh, we're, <laughs> it's not, we're not, uh, you know, it, for the most part, uh, he's absolutely right. And I'm so glad that he said what he had to say uh, because uh, I got to fix something here. Um, that, that he had to say, because it, it's really quite important that, the, that these things got said. Uh, and why the president suddenly decided that he was going to go after Mario Cuomo, uh, it, just, it just amazes me that he, uh, that he even did that. Because Cuomo has, and I listen to him every day, has gone out of his way not to in any way demean the president. He, he believes that this should not be a political fight, this is, and he's got to get what he can get for his state. And he's been very, very nice about Trump. I, I sit there every now and then and go, he must be biting his tongue, man. And then today, Trump decided to pick a fight with Cuomo. And I got to tell you, uh, when it comes to a battle of wits, 
you got to have some wit. And in the case of Mario Cuomo, he's got it in spades. Trump is a dunce. Don't you wish that Trump would get out there and just forget about the argument that was going on in this video. Don't you wish that our president just sounded like he knew what he was talking about? Cuomo sounds like he knows what he's talking about. He understands the facts. He understands the Constitution. He understands numbers. He absorbs all this, and he's able to tell us what it's all about. And Trump just sits there reading a bunch of words on a page and fumfering over the words and not knowing exactly what he's saying, but somebody wrote it for him, so he'll read it. It's like a kid at his, at his bar mitzvah just going through the motions of thinking he knows how to speak Hebrew. Um, Good for you, Mr. Governor. I really, you know, I, I am now a, a convert to the world of uh, Andrew Cuomo. Anyway, our lines are open now, and if you want to call, uh, I will be more than happy to take those calls. A lot of people listening right now, uh, and I thank you for that, and it's probably because you really enjoyed what Mario... Uh, Mario, what Andrew Cuomo had to say. I did, I did that once, and I felt so bad about it calling him Mario Cuomo because his father was Mario, and he was the governor of the state. Uh, but uh, uh, anyway, let's see here. Uh, uh, let's see here. Oh, it says here, to avoid legal snags, tell people that they're, they're being uh, uh, broad, uh, that they're being uh, broadcasted here. Uh, yes, Tony, uh, you're 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 going to be on the uh, on the air. Do you understand that? I think so. Yes. Oh, oh okay. All right. So was it was it. so nice hearing him tell him off today. Oh, was it? Is that uh -huh. not? Was that not wonderful? Were you cheering oh, him? Oh, I I loved it. I was going to kiss the TV set. I loved it that he stuck it right up his ass. Yeah, yeah, he really did, and. Um, uh, he, uh, wait, 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 hold on a second. I like what he said. I'm Instead having... of watching me on TV, why don't you go to work and do your job? Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Oh. Wait a minute. Hold on. Well, I'm just trying to get people going here. And it's like, we're having all kinds of problems here. Let me see. What, what is the problem? Kevin. I can't get Kevin on. I can't get anybody on. Okay, there we go. Now, do we get Kevin? Kevin, are you there at all? No. Son of a bitch. What is the problem here? Uh, and then Brian Neary. Okay, look, I'm going to hang up here. Uh, uh, okay. And then you're going to have to call back because okay. I've got to I've got a, a reboot uh, uh, Skype, I guess, uh, because um, Skype doesn't seem to want to do uh, let's see here quit okay quit I'm gonna get out of uh, okay all right and now um, oh, hold on folks I'm forcing a quit here uh, come on Skype there we go now we'll turn Skype back on and let's hope people call now and Give it a try. Okay, give it a try now. Let's see what happens. Um, uh, uh, no, it's something's, something's wrong tonight. Oh, boy. Hmm. I don't understand this. This is, like, uh, ridiculous. Look at that. It's, it rings, and then it stops ringing. Oh, boy. Oh. I don't know what to do here, folks. Uh, I'm trying to trying to get this thing going, and it's not. Uh, it's really not going. So, I don't know what the problem is. Okay, here's Tony frozen up there. Now I will try this again. Um, Skype. Okay, is Skype going? There we go. Now. Is it okay? Now let's tr somebody try calling me and let's see what happens. Um, I can, in fact, I can try calling some people. Like I can try calling Brian Neary and see if it see if it goes. 
Brian? See, I'm calling you. Jeez. It's not working. Hmm. Well, I don't know what the problem is tonight, folks. Okay. There's Kevin. Uh, yeah, finally, Kevin. Oh, boy. Okay, hold on a second. Now everybody else seems to be having trouble. There's Bree. Let's see if Bree comes up. Is Bree in there? No. Oh, boy. Um, yeah, I've hit it about six times, I think. Oh, Maybe. there's Bree. Okay, there's Bree. And here comes Phil. I'm not going to put any of these people on yet. Richard Johansson is there. Rob Alfano is there. Are we, have we got you, Rob? Come on. What's happening? Bree, you got to turn your 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 things all wrong. Your, I did. I did. I'm landscape now. Well, it's not. It's not. Okay, oh, let boy. me hang up and try again. Charlie. Can I get Charlie in here? There we, there, 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 there's Charlie. I try to get Charlie and I try to get Rob in. I can't get them in. There we uh, go. Rob, I'm, are you there? So. Rob, are you there? Patrick Blazik. Um, I'm not getting any of these people in here. It's a problem. It's a problem. Oh, boy. Not the in crowd. Huh? They're not in the in crowd. I don't know what the problem is here. Yeah, I had a hard time getting in. Uh, well, no, uh, I, I, Phil, don't, please, don't start with me right now. I now. need to fi figure okay, this great. thing out. Okay, <laughs> then we go Charlie Wallace. There we go. We get Charlie in there. Okay, and Rob Patrick Blazik. Okay, there's Patrick. Okay, now uh, Rob, Rob Alfano, geez, every time he calls, he gets hung up on. I don't know what's happening here, but let me, uh, let me see here, Rob Alfano. There we go, you there, Rob? Rob? I'm here. Okay, I don't know what's going on here. That was so weird, you're not lit up green. R really? On oh. my Skype, you're not lit up green. It, well, and it kept telling me you're not, you're unavailable. Let me see here. It's using a device. Yeah, again. that's what it kept telling me. Uh, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Let me see here. <sighs> I'm having a bit of a problem here. What? What? Where? Where are the? Where's? Where do I? Oh, here we go. Wait a minute. I know what I got to do. Uh, this is going to take. Well, I. It says I'm on. You're on. Huh? And now. Is it green now, folks? Well, we got to. I can't see it when I'm in this view. Hmm. Yeah. I have to do that. Hmm. Well, I don't know. Uh, let me see here. Todd, more. Okay. Now, what I got to do is I got have to. Uh, I have to. I have to somehow put these people on. Hold. Hold on. Uh, Zeller, there we go. All right, everybody, quiet a second here while I uh, go to work. Uh, we got to, uh, everybody, and who don't we have up here? Uh, I need um, who else called? Let's see here, Todd. Todd needs to go into the number eight spot. Is everybody that called? With people called yesterday, so I was able to. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and Brian Neary, uh, oh, you're there, right, Brian? Okay, I want to mm -hmm. see if you're, oh, no, I guess I'm going to have to go over to my 12 spot here and put Brian Neary in there in the um, 10 spot. Um, Brian <coughs> Neary. Uh, ba -ba 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 -da. There we go. Okay. Is he there? There he is. Okay, I don't know what was happening. Uh, to tell you the truth, but we're okay. I think we got it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then I got one. Wait, well, wait a minute. One, two, three, six, ten, 
Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Is there somebody doubled here for some reason? No, not at all. Yeah. Uh, let me see here. I guess, oh, I see, Tony's twice. That's what it is. So we can put Brian oh, in the, oh, God, this is, I hate this. Uh, wait a minute. Oh, who's, who's making all that noise? Stop it. Uh, while, I, while I try and get this going here, let me see here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so six is Webhead, and we'll make that Brian. Okay. We'll make that Brian Neary, and then uh, there we go. And I will get rid of him here. Um, let me see here. Richard Johansson is calling. God, everybody in the world is calling. Weren't uh, you complaining a couple months ago? Nobody was calling. I know. I, <laughs> uh, 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 now you know everybody was just busy. Now nobody has anything to do. So. But I don't know what where Johansson is here. Let me see here. What name is he using? Are you there, Richard? Richard, are you there? Oh, he's not even there. What am I? What am I even looking for him for? Okay, wait a minute. Hold on a second, folks. And we'll go to this, and then we'll do this, and we'll do that. And uh, no, that that we can't do. Here, I've got to do away with this. Uh, I, I, this is. You're right. I mean, I shouldn't. I shouldn't feel bad about this, but. I do. There we are. We got everybody. How many people did we lose doing that? Not a person left us while I was trying to get that all in uh, play. First of all, we had trouble with our Skype. Okay, and then we had trouble with that too. Hello, everybody. How are you? Alex, I wanted to say thank you, so I wanted to give you some flowers, a bouquet of flowers. Okay? Oh, really? What are the flowers for? It's what, what Cuomo was saying. Mm-hmm. Como was saying, yeah, what does he want, a bouquet of flowers? <laughs> <laughs> he needs to send him a bouquet of flowers. That would be really good. You know, it, it, he has, over the, over the last couple of weeks that we've watched him, been very nice about not going after Trump. Right. I know that he had to bite his yep. tongue every time, but he, he, he just didn't, okay? Uh, and I'm trying to get Josh Wheeler on now. Let's see if we can. I love him. that he went after. Huh? Yeah, I watched I that whole thing play out him. today. It was awesome. Yeah, it was. It was pretty good. Well, let me see here. J Josh, are you there, Josh? Josh. Someone's mic is just really bad. Yeah. A lot of crackling. Yeah. Who whose mic is crackling? I think, it, I think it's Todd. Looks like every time he moves. Really? Uh, 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 oh, Todd? Oh, okay. It could be Todd. Yeah, Todd, same mic problem you were having the other day, whatever you did then to make it better, do that, okay? Well, by the end of the show... Okay, by the end of the show, we'll have this all going. Uh, and um, um, somebody else tried to call and couldn't get in, I guess. Um, uh, uh, Josh, are you there at all? No. Okay. I'm here. Oh, you are there. Yeah, I'm here. Oh, yeah, there okay. Is. Well, then let me see if I can if I can put you in here in the number uh, ten spot, which would be uh, let's see here. Um, that would be uh, uh, Josh Wheeler. Okay, there we go. Are you there? Come on. I guess you. I, I guess we can't get your picture on, Josh. So just jump in whenever you want to jump in. Okay. Yeah. Uh, oh, wait a minute. I know why. There we go. We got you. Okay. All right. There we go. I was gonna say, I can well, see him fine. Well, I'm worn out. I don't know about the rest of you. Okay. Uh, let me go around the panel and just see what you thought. Of, how many of you listened tonight when I played uh, Cuomo? Uh, first of all, Brian, what would you think? Oh, yeah. Right when he started in on him saying that he should be if he's watching him on TV, he needs to get to work. Man, that was good. Yeah. I, I wanted to see more fireworks a little bit, but yeah, it was it was good to see somebody stand up to him. So and I, I, I like the part also that he he almost like told the press you guys are being too easy on him when he was talking about the 180 degree turn about the power. Yeah. 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 
And and um, I thought it was you know he um, he took him to the woodshed. What did you th did you hear it, um, uh, Todd? Todd, you there? I can't hear you now, Todd. We can't hear He's you. Muted. Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. Go ahead. Yeah, I heard it. I heard it. It was real good. Um, you know, it was good that he said what he had to say, and he mm -hmm. wasn't taking any more of that garbage because he'd been taking enough of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Tony, let's go up to you. You're the first in line there. I should have gone to you first. Yeah, Tony. Right. I, you know what? He he had to because there's only Trump is a bully to highest level. And I'm going to tell you something. After a while, Phil, you can say whatever you want. You got to punch him in the nose. <laughs> Enough with your shit talk. Yeah. And I think Cuomo took it up to here and says, you know what? He's going to tweet. He was twittering while he was talking. You know what? Enough of this guy. Because Trump wants all the... And you see what he tweeted out too, Alex? He wants to start a civil war. He's trying to tell the people to stand up. They're going to take their second amendment away. He's trying to systematically turn states against each other to win the election. Mm. He's crazy as a fox. He don't care if they kill each other in the street. He said they were good people. They're not listening to people in Michigan. How is that good? Yeah. Yeah. Well, Charles? Trump's a problem. Man. Yep. What do you think? What did you think? Did you hear it? I thought he was he was a little too soft on Trump. <laughs> I liked yep. that he took a bomb. I thought he, he could have done a lot. He could have hit him a lot harder. Well, yep. you know, <laughs> I think that would be, he would become the bully because he is so smart and he is so articulate, you know, that he could take him, he could take him to the woodshed, which he well, did, Alex, actually. He uh, told him, why don't Trump read his own report? He yeah. basically told him, you don't even do your homework. It's from you, the numbers. It's the numbers we got came from you. Love You're it. a fucking you know. toilet bowl, and, and you know what? Start doing your homework. Mm -hmm. Don't worry, Phil. I'm going to get to you, but I want to I want to go to a few other He's people a first. Moron, Trump. Uh, Rob, what'd you, what, did you hear it? Oh, yeah, I heard it. Um, you know, I feel exactly the same. He uh, He just systematically laid it out for him. You, you know, you, you know, think what it, I yeah. you think I uh, in, made up these numbers. Should we not have listened to you? Was it a mistake yeah. to listen to you and your numbers? Yeah, um, it was it was, um, you know, it's the kind of thing that if if Trump were comporting himself in this fashion, I think the country would feel a lot more secure. Yeah. But he doesn't have that ability. He's not as smart as Andrew Cuomo, he's not as well educated as Andrew Cuomo, and he's not as much of a New Yorker as Andrew Cuomo. He doesn't yeah, have that, right that New York not. moxie, you know. Um, he's a trust fund baby. His daddy was rich, mm -hmm. and he's living and everything he got in life. Even though, you know, we know Andrew Cuomo was, his father was connected, but you could see he, he went to school, he became a lawyer. He, had a, he, he has a formal education. Trump is a trust fund rich kid, who got everything handed to him? It was never said no in his life. Yeah, um, J uh, Jeff, what'd you think? Oh, turn on your mic, Jeff. Look, I'm on. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. I thought the governor was terrific, and and I couldn't believe that he that he had to wait so long to do it mm -hmm. because Trump's been nasty forever and today why did he actually go after after the governor i don't know because he was being upstaged by the governor i yeah, think Rob, that's right. the problem You're probably right. he's jealous that's it. Yeah. just jealous yeah you know it's like a trump says about his press conferences oh well i have the highest ratings in television <laughs> with my press conferences <laughs> He's so obsessed by things like ratings, which a president shouldn't really be concerned with. Okay. And they're ratings for the wrong reason. Huh? People are dying. That's why you get ratings. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's like he's bizarre yeah. the way he talks. If it was Ivanka uh, trying to breathe on a, on a respirator right now, God forbid, see how many people would be getting fired. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, uh, by the way, Bree, if you're listening, I can't get... I click on you and I can't get you on, so... Uh, it's best not to try, <laughs> you know, uh, because we, we get these many people. It gets a little, uh, little uh, uh, tightened up here. Um, it, uh, you know, but 
Well, uh, Josh, your feelings on the, on him? Did you hear the comments by Cuomo? Uh, I heard a little. Um, mm -hmm. I was on a call with mm -hmm. my work um, for a lot of it, mm -hmm. but uh, I've I'd heard his comments before. Um, I mean, I think he's you know doing a good job for New York, and he was factually correct. I mean, I'm not. I guess I'm not quite as pumped up about it as some folks. I mean, mm -hmm. he's doing his job, and you know he was factually correct. Uh, I'm not really in the let's have him run for president now club, and you know I don't want him running for president. And I want him as governor to finish this job first. Then yeah. then we he can think about that later. You know. Yeah. Right. So I mean, uh, mm -hmm. I told Patrick, you know, before just. Ask Abraham Lincoln how many generals won one battle and then went on to make a fool out of themselves in the big war. So, you know, <laughs> I mean, let's uh, well, see if, I, if, I'm, if I'm not incorrect, I think he tried running once before, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, he ran at least in the primaries. I don't know if he did or not. I don't remember that. I, I, I may be wrong. I think his father did, right? Well, his, fa no, his father never wanted to run for president. They kept begging him to because he was such a great orator. Yeah. Uh, and uh, he just wouldn't, didn't want to run for some reason. They've, uh, and no one's ever been able to figure out why. You know? uh, well, I mean, he was going to be nominated to the Supreme Court by Bill Clinton. Mm -hmm. I believe for the seat that Ruth Bader Ginsburg ended up with. Mm -hmm. I could be wrong. Uh, I mean, he was really, really close, and I don't remember how that fell apart. Yeah. Uh, uh, Patrick, Patrick, did you hear Cuomo that I played? No. Oh, okay. So I can't ask you what you thought. Yeah. Next. Uh, <laughs> and finally now, Phil. Oh, come on. Well, um, you know, he really showed me what he was all about. He really... He really showed me the essence of his soul, that he's a whiny, elitist, oh, low-light piece of shit. And <laughs> you, you like him, he I'm very surprised. Uh, you know, this guy really needs to be uh, uh, given, uh, brought out on his own p uh, petard. You know, that's what I thought of him. Trump or Cuomo? <laughs> <laughs> Question was what I thought of. Talking about Trump. Put him in one of those tents with. Put him in a tent with no PPE. That's it. Sorry, Phil. Here you go. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you know, uh, he he was given more than any other state, and he had more deaths in his state. And I put it. I put the blame only <laughs> on Cuomo, not on anyone else. Where's your? Cuomo. Where's he, your? Uh, it, he ran, the, he ran the deal, and he failed. His Where has your proof deaths. of that? Where is your facts? So you could blame anybody. They're, I can blame you for the deaths in New York. Where are your facts? They're buried in that mass grave. That's my fact. Phil, Phil. No, they want, he wants facts. I mean, back up what you say. You're, yeah, you have, to, you have no proof to blame shut him, him other than you are just blustering. Now, you want facts? How many deaths were there in New York as in comparison to the rest of the country? How many people <laughs> are on top of each other in New York? They're like, not on top of each other. They're, they're distancing. They're distancing. You know? They were. Yeah, they're not they, were they weren't distancing, though. You, you, uh, you, you know, you're, you're asking a stupid oh question, my, Phil. Oh Phil, God. you're it asking a stupid good. question. It's like saying, are you telling me there are more people who live in New York City than live in Contra Costa? Come on. Hey, unbelievable. I'm talking about the whole nation, 330 million people. You used to live in New York. People, how many are are died in other states and how many died in Cuomo state? I'm telling you, Phil, 13,202 people have died in New York State. The total deaths in the United States are 36,997, 37,000. Okay? Yeah, All right. Died in and I would say that the population of New York is 18 million. Compare that 19, to all. 19. 19 now? Okay. Compared to 330 million. And how many live on an island? How many live on a what? How, how big is Manhattan Island? And how big is Queens? And how big is Brooklyn? And how are these people on top of each other? They're in their house. 
You know, they're not going you, to work. You asked me a simple question: was what do I think of him? I think he failed. He's a failure, and he's making it up for it with his bluster and going after Trump, who did nothing but help the man. Trump hasn't helped anybody. That's a well, fucking lie. You thought, and that's what I think. No, you can't say Trump hasn't God, helped. God, you're predictable, he Phil. He's, he's been, he's been led to do and, it. and you know, he has these conferences where he sits there and he talks and he talks and he talks. And he pats himself on the back. Doesn't every governor has that though. Doesn't get one question by any news report. People praise him, or they can't when, get the call. Charlie, when Trump is talking. He's answering questions for hours that the reporters want to ask. He's making. Oh yeah, yeah. He, why, they're asking him the questions if he doesn't like the if he doesn't like the Phil. If he doesn't like the question that he's being asked, he he interrupts continually so the person can't get the question out. Phil, he's rude. He's rude. Phil, I, you know, I I don't believe you. I don't believe you're this stupid. All right. You asked me. You know, you, you knew. I what do, you but I, I find it hard to believe you're this you stupid. I didn't. My mouth until you asked me, and then when you asked me, I told you what I thought. And if you don't like the answer, don't ask well, me. Well, if I didn't ask you, I would be unfair because there are all these other people here. Yes, Patrick, do you have your hand up? No. Oh, I thought you did. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not you to be fair. You know, I don't think that it's. That Rob doesn't like your answer. I mean, he doesn't. I think he's asking, "What are you basing your answer on?" Other than right. the fact that Cuomo plays for the other team. I he, mean, I, I guess what I'm saying is, you're the guy who roots. On, just give me a second. You're the guy. I'm just saying, you're the guy who roots for a team, and the guy who plays on the other team. You hate that fucking guy because he always fucking hits a home run against your team every fucking game. I hate that fucker. He sucks. What do you mean? He sucks. He was, you know, you're the Reds fan who hated Albert Pujols. He's overrated. He's a fucking piece of shit. You know, how did he ever win five National League Most Valuable Player Awards? I'll never fucking get it. Goddamn <laughs> biased sports writers. Uh, that's all he's saying. Uh, they you trade him to your team and you love him. Right. I'm saying. saying is, is that the guy is playing politics and uh, instead of dealing with uh, How's he playing I politics, Phil? Phil, Phil. Phil. Yeah, exactly. if he were playing Phil. politics, he'd be running for you something. Know how this came he? up, Phil. Phil, yeah. how you know this came up in the press conference? Because the reporter asked him a question. What do you think of what the president said? The governor didn't pick a fight with him. It was the other way around. So oh, that's God. he was responding <clears throat> to what the reporter said. asked. That she read. The reporter read the comments to the governor, the, the, and then the, the governor responded. Well, the well, government will backwards. you let will you let Rob finish, please, Phil? Yeah, I mean, you you have to be fact. If you're going to have an argument, you have to be, it has to be based in fact. The governor came on and he gave his press conference. And then he said questions, and and the woman reporter there in the front said, "Mr. Uh, governor, what do you think of what the president said?" And she went on to read comments, and he said right. He started with right away. Look, I don't know what I can do. I thanked him. I thanked him for the, the, the boat. I thanked him for the beds. He says I had too many beds. We went off of the CDC numbers. And by the we way, you, you forgot the great CDC line, though. Force numbers. You forgot the great line, Rob. My favorite line of the whole thing. What does he want? A bouquet of roses? Yeah, what does yeah, he want? Yeah, like, how do I have to thank him? <laughs> He's doing his job. <laughs> <laughs> you know? It's not. There's nothing wrong with thanking somebody for doing their job, and uh, he did. Uh, and what, he got in, what does he need? A blow job? Yeah, that's what he wants, and he still complains. Everybody <laughs> else gives him <laughs> one. <money. laughs> yeah. Kevin, did I ask you what you thought of uh, of, of, of Cuomo? Maybe I missed you. Yeah, I, I did. Oh, not, nothing to add. Yeah. Yeah. I saw the whole thing. Same old shit. How did you feel when that started happening? Because I, I had already gone into another room doing some other stuff because the main meat of his press conference was through with all the numbers and stuff yeah. like that that's interesting. And then I go in the other room, and all of a sudden I hear Marjorie going, Oh, my God, 
Yeah, we remember all the and, and I so I run in. I say, "What's going on?" And she, we backed it up because it was on and the DVR. You know, DVR. it's terrible that we feel that way. Oh, and we, the only reason we feel that way is because he's constantly picking. He's and so you just want to give it back to the bully. It's it's just like on this. It's just like in the schoolyard when the bully finally gets. Well, picked on a little he, bit. He, you know, you cheer a little bit. It they, sucks. They, 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 day in and day out, we have watched. We have watched Cuomo do these things every morning, and we keep going. Come on, why don't we just put a little, little, little knife you know, in there somewhere? You know, to Trump, and he doesn't. He's been very good about it because, as he says, this isn't about politics. This is about human lives, and yeah. he said this is no time for people to. Yes, yes, Brian. <laughs> No time for people to be arguing with each other. What are you going to say, Brian? I uh, just going to say, yeah. Even our so our CE so our president of our company, which is a small division of Danaher, but uh, yeah, he says, you know, right now we're just trying to get tests out. We're, we're working so much and everything. He says we'll compete with everybody later. He goes, right now we need to get the tests out for everybody. We'll compete yeah. in June when everything starts calming down, and then we'll go against Roche and Abbott. Right. Right. And, 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 and his attitude has been, now is not the time to be fighting. Now is the and time. Nor is it the time to stop helping, like he said. Yeah. He said, what's he going to do? Because he did what he did, he's done? Is that it? He goes, yeah, imagine if I point. said, all right, so I, I beat the curve. I brought in this. We got the ship. We did all this together. I'm done. I'm going to go spend time with my wife. I'm done. I'm going to be with my daughters. Yeah. You're not yeah. done. You're the president. Yes. I see, I think it's going to get worse. I see the yes. quote. And the quote is from Donald Trump. Mm. It says, Governor Cuomo should spend more time. Well, I read it. I read it, Phil. Time. We read it. Well, you want me, you yeah, want me he, to win it? He, he you, responded to that quote. Hold, hold on a second. I'll, uh, I'll put it, up, well, on, I'll put it on, up on the screen for everybody to see while you read it. Because I had this on earlier on the screen. I read it. Then the reporter read it. So why are you reading it again? I didn't, he didn't see that. Mm -hmm. He doesn't believe anything. Okay. Well, I didn't see that part, and I just looked up the quote. Yeah, well, I think he's sitting too. watching television like the president is. Yeah. He's out. He is <laughs> managing the largest economy in the country. He's managing a tremendous he's amount of people. That's what he's managing to do. He's managing to crash the largest economy in the country. Oh, you just want to bring well, How's he right doing that? Would you explain how he's doing that, Phil? He's keeping us safe. Uh, lockdown is draconian. And, uh, <laughs> oh, boy. And, uh, you know, it could have been, uh, it didn't have to be as as great as it was. I mean, Sweden. Phil, you know, until today safe. when the president started. The si Phil? Difference, the difference between Sweden and, and New York was uh, that uh, Sweden had the herd mentality and uh, uh, the amount of de deaths per capita, I don't think was any different. Phil, how big is Sweden? And who's going to Sweden? Nobody. <laughs> I mean, who's, going to how big is who's going to Queens? I got 30 people here. In, this, in, in, in my county, I have 30 coronavirus family. cases. We could go yeah. out. Yeah. That's not such a big deal. Sweet. Well, do you think the entire state of New York needed to be locked down? Yeah, we were. In... Yes, because people because, in the state. And, well, no. are you, are you, do you want an answer, we, Phil, or don't you want an answer? We've got a lot of debts here. And, and, and Cuomo talks about it all the time. He says he has to coordinate with all the states around us because people, if they, do, if they lack something in one area, it's going to affect us because people will then travel from state to state. If here, if he doesn't lock down the whole state, then the people from upstate are going to come down here. Maybe they're going to catch it, and then they're going to go back there. Okay? That's exactly what's happening mm -hmm. in Pennsylvania and West Virginia right now. I live 30 minutes from West Virginia. The, the, for some reason, in Pennsylvania, the government has closed all liquor stores, and there's been a rush on booze. And so in all of the surrounding counties to the, the, the bordering counties, they've been getting all the Pennsylvanians to come into West Virginia. Mm -hmm. And the West Virginians put a stop to that. You're not allowed in our state. We don't want your infection. Stay out. I haven't been to Pennsylvania in a long time, but I remember that they were state stores. There. I think they were called right. packed stores. Right. We have so them here in Virginia. They're probably closed down because they were owned by the state. Well, no, uh, my, our stores are owned by the state. They're open. 
They're essential personnel in those. Well, because those also stores. because that's a store that sells an item which you can like like a grocery store or whatever. You don't sit down to use it. Okay, no, you buy it, space. you leave. Uh, the, in Pennsylvania, there are state stores, and maybe I'm, that's that walking. doesn't. We're it doesn't not, matter. We're Phil. not my, saying my state has state stores. We're saying All why would stores. they leave these yeah. things open? And the reason they would leave them open is because you don't sit down in them. You don't. Uh, you can keep safe distances. You can create that kind of environment. Sell a bottle of booze to somebody next. You but know. the point is that that's what Alex was saying about having to coordinate with the with the surrounding states, so you don't have all that bleed out. And people leaving New York, going to other states, you have to close the whole area. You have to think bigger than just simple answers for everything. There aren't simple answers to problems like this. Well, I'm I'm glad I'm not the one that has to deal with it. Yeah, but, uh, I'm. We're glad you're not the person that has to deal with it. Yeah, I had. A line today. I drove uh, uh, almost three hours uh, to get ammo each way and uh, you know, uh, they, they social distanced you had to you'd be six feet apart. People were wearing masks. They got you in. They were got you, you wearing out. A, were you wearing a mask too? Yeah. yeah. Okay. You could have robbed the place, you know, and gotten the bullets for free. Uh, I'm sure they were all uh, uh, um, no, you, no, you can't. No. I have a I have a uh, a pile of ammo about three feet high. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like the toilet paper in our place. Yeah. <laughs> you know, oh, you all of a sudden tea. we looked today and we saw, I saw she had some toilet tissue and then she had two boxes of seltzer and then she had some more stuff. And finally she looked at me and said, we're becoming hoarders. <laughs> yeah, you know, we're getting ready for the apocalypse here. You know, as far as I'm concerned, this this pissing match is between Trump and Cuomo, and I don't really give a shit. No, about you know it something, and, and Tony, I think you'll pissing. agree with me on this because Tony's a died in the wool New Yorker, and he's from Queens. It's where Trump is from, and he'll say it with me too. And that is, you pick a fight with our governor, you pick oh, a yeah. fight with us. I I got respect for him today. I really do because he's getting poked oh. too many times. Yeah. You yeah. gotta stick up for yourself once in a while. Well, he just he, he had a great deal of, uh, of of what's the word I'm looking at? He's had a great deal of restraint throughout this whole thing. Absolutely. Yeah. For for months. Yeah. For yeah. months he's been. Uh, I mean, how much can you take from the guy? Giving, giving Trump uh, a blowjob well, every yeah. day. Yeah, and he he <laughs> has been nothing but complimentary to Trump for what he's done for the state. And he is, you know, he's been talking to Trump and he's been talking to his people. And all of a sudden, out of a clear blue sky, Trump does this tweet, which yeah. is, is like, you know. It's, who can I kill today? Yeah, who can I kill today? Uh, um, I hope it's Nancy Pelosi. Oh, yeah. geez. I think Trump likes her. They're always fighting with each yeah, other. Yeah, it's, it's sexual tension. Like, I can like, see it. <laughs> just I can see it. it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, about Nancy Pelosi and stopping the PPP, I uh, got an email today that I went through. You went through. Well, th that's good because you should, since Ruth Chris's, your favorite restaurant, Ruth's Chris, uh, got, uh, got $20 million from the government. And, and get this, their, their profit last year was only $40 million. Well, and you, the and, thing and, is, they're allowed and, to make a profit, number one. Number two, they have a lot of employees that are uh, worried mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. paying their... $20 million dollars to a fucking steakhouse, Phil? It's, it's a he can't, he's eating his and rolls. a sandwich, it's sandwich it's shop, too. It's you know, a sandwich it, shop, too. You know how many <laughs> restaurants it has? And, and how many employees? There's chefs, there's... Bartenders, there's waiters, there's uh, oh we 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 we. So I guess I guess um, uh, Olive Garden should probably get thirty million. I you know I don't know what their deal is. They filled out the application like everybody else. If they gave them the money, it's because. So how much are you going to get, Phil? Two thousand, and I got another. I got eight the other day, so it's sixty grand. The sixty grand you got? Okay, but you got to spend that all on your employees, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, employees. Yeah. Uh, uh, hmm? Don't tell me you spend it on ammo today. 
Yeah. Use the company card. Don't worry. I, I, Tony, <laughs> you want to out here? <laughs> it's only bullets. What does that have to do with rugs? Not it's only shot. bullets. Just bullets. As, uh, if they don't pay, I shoot them. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Um, it, it's, a, it's a collection tool. Yeah. Oh. Um, Come on. You know, he was great today, though. Me and my mother were cheering on the couch. I mean, when I heard it, I just said, "I've got." It. I had to. I had to find a version of it that I, wasn't I run by I any was, network. I was so excited, you know, that was taking part of the common pool feed, so that you know, good old YouTube wouldn't say, "Oh, you know, you're using somebody else's material." You know, so uh, there, you may notice I had a version with no logo on it. You know, well, no crazy. breaking news. Uh, hey, you, you can use C-SPAN stuff anytime. They allow everyone. They have no copyright. I guess so. I, I, the, well, there's no, you know, if somebody were to, to gripe about them. Here's what bothered me. I went to a couple of these sites, uh, a couple of these YouTube channels, and it was like NBC's YouTube channel, and they had the press conference on there, right? And before it ran, there was a commercial. And I'm going, they shouldn't. YouTube should not be allowed to run commercials in programs that have what we would call um, uh, just, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, uh, it, it has material which is not uh, in, it's in public domain, you know, because it's just, it's, it's somebody like, it's like the president giving a speech to the nation or Mario Cuomo giving a press conference, or the governor of New Jersey giving a press conference. It shouldn't. Ma they shouldn't be run commercials in those situations. Providing the service, therefore, why not run the commercial? Because that's what pays for the service. But uh, no, Phil. My argument is that this is a piece of of, of public domain material. It is simply a, a news feed, uh, a pool feed. And uh, they shouldn't be allowed to make a buck off of it, period. Like tonight, there probably is a commercial running before my show. Uh, but, and then I ran that. And they really probably shouldn't have run a commercial right before my show. Uh, but they didn't know I was going to run that. So, you know. Do they really know what you're running, uh, you know, when they run the commercial? They, you know, they just know post Oh, it. they just don't know. Yeah. No, I, I, in fact, I tuned it in one time, and it was Franklin uh, Graham. Doing a commercial for <laughs> his tents, his tent ABC show. ABC Mouse. Huh? ABC Mouse. Not hey. ABC yeah. Mouse is a is a learning uh, a learning program for the computer for for you know it's, for like my daughter. Yeah. And that was running before your. Oh before really? One of the ads one time. <laughs> and then you then I would listen to it and you're swearing fuck this and pussy that. Uh, <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't get that filthy uh, anymore. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Because I do. I mean, say, I, I, no, you can say the f. You can say the f word every now and then, and it doesn't. It's not a problem. I've told them that. I've ticked off a bunch of things that we do, and one of them was yes, we do use the f word occasionally. Yeah, you, yeah. you, you told them Josh only calls one night a week. Yeah, I told them Josh only calls one night a week. But they did say is is if you have Phil on much more often, we're not going to run any commercials. On your show. If if you're watching Fox, for instance, and they put up a clip from CNBC or MSNBC, uh, and you even see the you know MSNBC logo, mm -hmm. uh, do they have to pay? Uh, it's fair MSNBC? usage if they're using it for comment. Yeah, yeah. If, if you're commenting on the clip, you say, "Look, look what Laura Ingram said last night to uh, Dr. Fauci." Blah 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 yeah. blah. Um, that's that? it's considered yes. fair usage. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, because I always wonder, you know, how can they play the clip of somebody else's work? No, you know? it's fair usage. Yeah. Right. Um, they all do yes, it. Kevin. Uh, yeah, I saw a little bit of that thing with Laura Ingram and Fauci. And she was so wrong about everything. And yeah, she ended and, up pretty damn quick, too. And <laughs> what? And Fauci took her to the woodshed. Yeah, he basically told her, no, that's misleading. And then she said, okay, well, let, uh, it's uh, time for a commercial. <laughs> She was, she was, there was something with AIDS that she brought up. She said, oh, yeah, well, you no, never came up. She said that this, this, this COVID-19 is just going to disappear anyway, right? And he said, no, that's a little misleading. And she says, well, it's time to go. Oh, okay. Well, she also said that it was like we, we didn't cure AIDS. We simply found a way of preventing yes. people from dying of yeah, it. It was a so, workaround. Yeah. yeah. So um, it, do we really need a cure for this? Do we really need an inoculation for this? And he, 
kind of said, go away, yeah. yeah, we do. AIDS is a different situation. I mean, uh, 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 Laura Ingram's like Phil. She doesn't understand everything. So. She's brilliant. By the way, Phil, I got to apologize to you. Got nice teeth. I got to apologize to you. Uh, what's the setup? <laughs> There's no setup here. I was uh, listening to, uh, uh, as I do, uh, to Jack Bishop's show last night because I'm working here, putting all the shows up and everything. Mm-hmm. And um, um, Scott Boddicker got into it with 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 uh, Jack. Uh, putting you down, and then everybody else piled in, and Jack made some jokes about you. Leap. Huh? <laughs> what? I was just. And I was, a little, I was a little bothered by that. I was bothered by that only in that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they can feel how they want to feel about you, but say it to your face. Yeah, well, you, you know, know I mean, Jack would would content. you agree, Rob? That I I don't like people talking about anybody behind their back on this show. If they want to, I've got an open line here. Just come on this show and say what you got to say to Phil. I personally don't care. I mean, Jack needs a topic sometimes. If it gets his people excited, then you know, let him have at it. Yeah, but know? but I don't like I I don't like it because I just think it's 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 beating up on somebody who isn't there. To defend yeah. themselves, hey, and and wait a minute, wait a minute, and if I and if I if I if I let it go without saying something, then it might happen to somebody else who does get hurt by it. Well, that that that's nice of you, but you know we beat up on you Trump, know. or you do. I mean, so, I yeah. think I think you're so he's the full, president. He's I I think you're so figure. you're so full of crap, okay, <laughs> that I can't believe it. But I, you know, I'm not about ready to. Uh, uh, to suddenly say I don't want you on my show anymore, you know. And when you are full of crap, I tell you that, you know. So and vice versa, huh? <laughs> yeah, and vice versa, right? You know, uh, you know uh, it's it's nice to have uh, my friend Stony last night. He listened to the show and he said, you know, uh, you know, it, it'd be nice to have someone else that uh, you know is is on my side. Mm-hmm. But uh, you know, on the other hand, I said. You know, Alex is very fair. He's not one of these types of talk show hosts that only has one uh, opinion and that anybody else that has another opinion gets hung up on. Uh, so, you know, uh, it's what you're doing, I think, is, is very nice, even though, you know, I know nobody's going to like what I got to say. And, and it's not yeah. going to change any but, minds. But I just but, felt I just know, felt I just I just felt like I, I almost called him up to defend you and to say, <laughs> look, you know. Uh, uh, Phil's Phil's a friend. Uh, I, I hate to admit that because it <laughs> lessens me in other people's eyes, but you know he is, and um, I, I I think he's full of crap, and I don't like anything he has to say. But damn it, he's on my show. I let him on it to express his opinion, and he can express any damn opinion he wants to, just as long as it doesn't hurt somebody else. You know. Yeah. Um, well, that's nice of you. I appreciate it. Uh, you know, and if they do it to somebody else, you know, yeah. I would appreciate if you defend them. Yeah, uh, uh, me, uh, I don't care. You Patrick, know, I, I, Patrick, I, I'm happy that I'm happy that they had an exciting session. You know, if that's yeah. what it took, that, that's great. You know? pa- pa- Patrick's kind of quiet tonight. What are you thinking, Patrick? Of, of what? Well, I just want to know what are you are you are you thinking about anything? Maybe you want to talk. Uh. No, I mean, you were covering with Cuomo, and I don't have an opinion. He's not my governor, so I, yeah. I've got more on for governor, and I'm more <laughs> concerned about what he's doing to destroy my state than anywhere else. So. Yeah. What do, you, what, do you, what, do you, what do you think overall about the stay-at-home order? Do you feel that it, where you live it's, it's called for? I think it's horseshit where I live, but... If I get too far into the weeds, I'm going to lose people, so it's not worth really discussing. I think there had been some overreach. and uh, you know. I, I saw him on TV today. Was he lifting some of the stuff today or what? Who? Oh, exactly. Your governor. He took <laughs> lift a fucking pencil. <laughs> lifting lifting in the, uh, out here means stealing. <laughs> no, I thought he was. I thought he was lifting. You know, like you could go out and buy some plants or some shit. Yeah. I, I walk through it. He does, and he's ambulatory. I mean, he's as, as much of a waste as a six-year-old uh, six little kid. 
eat <laughs> fucking idiot on top of it. So you saw Okay, me. I guess that's a no. Yeah, I guess. I, I, what you said I, about you uh, I guess he hasn't got your vote. <laughs> you know, what's, on the other hand, what's the stuff going on in Michigan where you can't plant any uh, flowers or, or, or food and uh, you can't go out, you can't visit anyone? Uh, well, that or, whole area, all those states up there started a coalition on the opposite side. They're all going to start opening up. Uh, Illinois, Ohio, I think is one of them. Uh, all, that, all those states in that area, Wisconsin and a bunch of them are all starting to open up. Was that due to the protests? Uh, well, they're saying it is, but I don't know. I'm wondering. I'm wondering how long it's it going to be before they start getting impacted. If suddenly tomorrow they say, well, "Okay, forget it, come Trump on." Was out. on there. He he threw a couple of uh, tweets on there that that said, uh, "What did he say? Liberate." He's yeah. The yeah. three yeah. different yeah. states. He said, My "Liberate." State, he said, hashtag liberate. Virginia. The three different states today. Yeah. Uh, they all have Democratic and, governors, by the way. Yeah. Jacksonville. What, 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 Jacksonville uh, opened up the beaches. Brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. They, they showed all these people rushing into the beach like they said it's been shut down for a year. Science be damned. It was, supposed yeah, yeah. To, yeah. it was supposed to be very limited, that they couldn't stop. They they had to be walking. They had a social distance. I heard the governor uh, uh, of Florida uh, give his – or uh, it was the mayor of Jacksonville or governor of Florida? I don't it was remember. the mayor of Jacksonville. Well, it's funny uh, because they're, they're, were, they're protesting, but they're all standing out there in the street puking on each other and spitting and talking to each other and, yeah. and it made no sense. Well, they're they're practicing well, to get the virus. Is, but in the meantime, I'm spitting on the other guy next to him telling him, you know, we want our rights and flying flags. And it made and no sense. And All it takes is one person with the virus in that crowd and the whole that, fucking crowd's going to get sick. <clears throat> well, today today uh, uh, Cuomo was explaining that it, uh, if one person Gives it to 1.2 other people. Okay. Well, no, 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 no. Let me explain yeah, this, Phil. It's exponential. He it, said 1.2. He says we're in trouble. He says right yeah. now we're 0. 0.9. He says I've never seen. He made a little joke. I've never seen a 0. 0.9 person, but it's the statistic. And if it goes, it stays there. Fine, but the minute it goes to 1.2, we start having a problem. And then that person gives it to another person, gives it to another person, and so on. Yeah, yeah, yeah explain as, explain as this as, a little more, Brian. Is Brian no, no, has no, no, no. I, the, the one thing that, that concerns me, and you know, they, they keep saying flattening the curve, but you know, when you see the curve and the curve just flattens, you're still having that same amount of deaths, you know, and you're in shelter. Yeah. You know, so now if you start getting out of shelter and, you know, if that curve doesn't start coming down, you know, we'll, we'll see how Jacksonville is and we'll see how some of these churches are. But we'll start seeing some results coming in the next couple of weeks. Yeah. And they're saying they that get the out eight of days that we were ahead in California, those eight days are also exponential because those are eight days that were less contact that was happening out here. And that's why we're so far under the curve. Todd's in a yeah. Todd, Todd if if everybody knows is is in a truck because he's a trucker. How has the trucking business been affected by this now? Now that we're a couple of weeks more out. work, huh? More work. More work, really. What kind of stuff are you hauling? Uh, everything from the toilet paper to you name it. We're yeah. hauling it all. You but, hook up. <laughs> but I know I know that business and. You stopping to get anything has been a bitch. Yes. Yeah. You you don't you don't just stop anywhere to get you know stop and take a leak or stop and get food. You can't stop anywhere. Why can't he stop anywhere? Because they're all closed. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Just... A driver a driver has to depend on getting to a warehouse and taking a leak in a porta potty. Or a driver yeah. has to sit in a parking lot for hours on end waiting to get into his to his load to get his load off. And then he has to wait for another one. It sucks right now for a driver. I've waited for hours to get my load off, but... Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was coming. Today, coming down from Grass Valley, we all wanted to stop. There was six cars, ten people. And so we wanted to stop and, and get something to eat. 
And in order in order to do that, we found a sandwich shop, but we had to eat in the parking lot. It's not easy to uh, you know to to find a place to you know, go to the bathroom. Did you ever try or, to go to McDonald's with a eighteen wheeler? Don't happen. It's impossible. Nowhere to park. And uh, yeah. Well, well to begin with, getting it through the doors is hell. Yeah, well, you take out half of the. Yeah, yeah. traffic should be good. Yeah, but uh, well, the traffic uh, was fine going up and coming back in the morning, uh, going up, but coming back uh, on eighty, it was bumper to bumper, and it was all eighteen wheelers. I, I don't, know why, but hmm. it was it was bumper to bumper going. Uh, I think they call that east. Uh, I always called it north on eighty. West. It's west. west. No, no, west West goes towards San Francisco. East and west. 80 is east yeah. and west. Right, so it's yeah. east uh, going... No, you're going east towards Sacramento, you're going west towards, towards San Francisco. That's it. All right. yeah. The traffic was going east towards Sacramento. Uh, the okay. heavy traffic. There you go. Yeah. Now you know where you're going. Okay. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't mean to interrupt you, uh, Todd. I, I I'm sorry. I said that most people... Call it north and south, even oh, though Bill it's means really to interrupt. Where, where are you right now in this country of ours, Todd? Uh, I'm sitting over here at Toledo, Ohio. Uh huh. And um, is it uh, is it pretty quiet in Toledo right now? No, everybody act like they never stopped really working. Really? Mm -hmm. I mean, are they all walking the streets and things like that? And yes, they got masks on, but they're all walking, and you know. The distance eh, is half and half, but it's. You know what's what's tough. happening? I I think the reason why it's it's dead quiet in New York. I could sh I could hang a, 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 a what do you call it? A, a webcam out my window in the other room and show you the street, and you would see it's pretty empty. And yeah. the reason is is that we really know the impact of it here, but places like a Toledo, Ohio don't know the same impact that we do. But if it ever starts happening to them, you can bet your life those streets are going to start getting damn quiet. And it could be that what's happening to us, we're like the canary in a coal mine. Yeah, we'll get it solved here. Uh, we'll finally kind of get it to where it levels off and, and life is not normal, but it, we don't, we're not worried about dying from this thing. Uh, and uh, that, you know... Um, so, but it's, it's the next town that's going to get it. And I hope before it gets there that one of these things, like Revisavir or whatever this thing is, uh, comes along, and they can just give you something to stop it. But until that comes along, we're not getting back to any kind of normalcy at all. You Josh, know? do you know how many deaths there have been in Ohio uh, of, uh, for the virus? Uh, a couple I'm, hundred, I'm, a couple I'm, hundred I'm, I think. I don't just, remember off the top of my head. Uh, yeah. yeah our, our county here just yeah. passed an ordinance that you have to wear a mask outside. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Marin and Sonoma also passed that sure. same ordinance. And, and Fremont, California, uh, just one city, mm -hmm. they passed that same ordinance. Yeah. Austin, too. Yeah. Well, it says uh, 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 your friend Stoney writes that New York City is not empty. I was there today. It's not nearly as busy, but people are out. I photographed them today and last week. Yeah, they're out there, but they're not as many of them. And it, it it's not like it is on it, like it has been in the past. I mean, this is a pretty empty city all, for the most part. Everybody's indoors. And uh, we're having a wonderful time being indoors. God, I'm. This is what my. I think our sixth. Is this our sixth week, Jeff? Oh yeah. I think this is six weeks now. God damn it! Oh, I want to kill somebody. Anyway, uh, kill Cuomo. He's the one that put you in there. Oh uh, yeah, right. Yeah, sure. No, but, you, but you're the one that's keeping me here, Phil. Uh, anyway, thank you so much. First to Tony, then to Charlie, then to Phil, mm -hmm. then to Rob, then to Jeff, uh, then to Brian. And Brian, you've been on every day this week. We love having you here. Keep doing it. Kevin, great having you here. Uh, uh, and Todd, oh, always wonderful to see you. Patrick, we love the world of you. And, of course, um, um, uh, our, our good friend, um, I'm just so Josh Wheeler. Uh, I'm just wacky. Anyway, 
hey, listen, that's it for this week. I'm exhausted. Uh, yeah. I don't know about you, uh, but tomorrow I get all my food from Costco. Ta-da! Ta-da! Well, I came yeah. in today. <laughs> yeah, all right. So anyway, uh, everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give you a big wave goodbye as well. There they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our citizen panel, and hopefully some of them will go over and go over to the next show after us, and that is, of course, Jack Bishop. He's going to be here with The Intersection coming up next over most of this GabNet. Uh, I'm Alex Bennett, and I will uh, be uh, seeing you again, uh, what, uh, next Tuesday at um, uh, 1030 Eastern Daylight Time. And in the meantime, as always, and I love to say this, if you see her, tell her I love her. Have a nice weekend, everybody, and stay safe and stay in. Stay the fuck at home.